from our Chicago studios. This is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Samana Siddiqui. Our top story tonight. On the sixth day of ongoing hostilities, Israel continued its relentless barrage of air and artillery strikes on Gaza. The Israeli military asserted its primary targets were Hamas military infrastructure. However, the unceasing airstrikes have resulted in over a thousand Palestinians killed, including at least 270 children, according to the Palestinian Ministry of Health. Israel has also inflicted extensive damage upon civilian infrastructure. Israeli bombs also destroyed 22,000 Palestinian homes in the last five days. The violence has now extended beyond Gaza. Jewish settlers killed two Palestinians in the occupied West Bank during a funeral procession for three Palestinians killed in a settler attack the previous day. The Israeli army also conducted a raid in the city of Jenin in the northern part of the occupied West Bank. Israel is amassing troops near the Gaza border, sparking concerns of a potential ground invasion. The Israeli military says it is prepared for all options, but refrained from confirming a decision regarding a ground invasion. In a notable shift, the frequency of rocket launches by Hamas into Israel decreased on the state. Experts speculate this reduction may be related to a strategic anticipation of Israeli forces entering Gaza's territory. Senior official with the International Committee of the Red Cross, Fabrizio Carboni, warned the humanitarian crisis in besieged Gaza is becoming unmanageable very quickly. The Euromed Human Rights Monitor has called on the international community to urgently advocate for a temporary humanitarian ceasefire for 24 hours to avert an impending major disaster. The U.S. and Saudi Arabia are taking active steps to prevent further escalation of the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz expressed support for mediation efforts by Turkey, Egypt and Qatar in the ongoing conflict on Thursday. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman held a rare dialogue with Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, stressing the importance of preventing the conflict from spreading. Both nations recognize the importance of defending Palestine. Canadian Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie voiced concern about the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Gaza. Speaking Wednesday, Jolie highlighted the grim conditions in the region, intensified by a possible Israeli ground operation against Hamas. Her remarks are among the most straightforward expressions of worry by a major Western country so far. Three Canadians have lost their lives with another three unaccounted for in the conflict. Jolie expressed deep sorrow over the casualties and underscored the urgency for a humanitarian corridor into Gaza. Canada is taking steps to safeguard its citizens in the region. More than 4,700 Canadians in the affected areas have registered with the government. About 700 of them are seeking evacuation. The Canadian government has arranged for two military planes to transport citizens and permanent residents from Tel Aviv to Athens. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan avoided direct comment on Israel's military actions. Elsewhere, Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman emphasized efforts towards peace and reiterated his nation's support for the Palestinian cause. Hamas has released a video showing the return of an Israeli female captive and two children. The video, which aired on Al Jazeera on Wednesday night, shows the unidentified woman and the children from behind. The men, presumably Hamas fighters, are seen walking away after leaving them in an open area near a fence, which could be the frontier between Israel and Gaza. It is unclear when the video was shot. The Qassam brigades, the armed wing of Hamas, said the woman was an Israeli national. Hamas also rejected allegations that it committed crimes against women and children. An estimated 150 captives were captured by Hamas on Saturday during its unprecedented assault on Israel, which immediately declared war on Gaza. The relentless Israeli bombing over five days has killed more than 1,000 people, including hundreds of civilians. It has also wounded more than 5,000 others in Gaza, its health ministry says. The United Nations Palestinian Refugee Agency reports 250,000 people have been displaced in Gaza. Israel's siege of Gaza has created what observers say is a humanitarian catastrophe. At least 11 UN staff members and 30 students at UN schools have been killed in Gaza by Israeli airstrikes. The agency wrote in a post on X, it was very saddened to confirm 11 colleagues have been killed since October 7th in Gaza. Some were killed in their homes with their families. UN spokesman Stéphane Dujaric told reporters that the United Nations Relief and Works Agency has been working round the clock to respond to the needs of the displaced. 22 Americans have been killed and 17 are missing in the latest escalation of the conflict in Israel and Palestine. White House spokeswoman Karine Jean-Pierre says those numbers could increase in the coming days. 
National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says several Americans are being held hostage by Hamas. The State Department offered its deepest condolences to the victims and the families of all those affected. Arab foreign ministers have called for an immediate halt to ongoing Israeli airstrikes and the siege on Gaza. The ministers met in Cairo for an emergency session to discuss Israeli airstrikes on the Palestinian territory. They condemned the killing of civilians on both sides and all acts contrary to international and humanitarian law. In a resolution after the meeting, they called on all parties to exercise self-restraint. Arab League ministers sounded the alarm about the disastrous humanitarian and security implications of the current escalation. They stressed the need to work with the international community to urgently undertake effective efforts to prevent the spread of violence in the region. The Arab League is a confederation of 22 Middle Eastern and North African states. Israel drops white phosphorus bombs in Gaza. Details after the break, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Israel has reportedly shelled the western port area of Gaza with white phosphorus bombs, resulting in hundreds of cases of suffocation. Palestinian medics told Andalou News Agency that hundreds of Palestinians suffered choking attacks as a result, and many were taken to hospitals. Most of the injuries were among children and the elderly, especially those with pre-existing respiratory conditions, the sources said. White phosphorus bombs are internationally banned under the 1980 Geneva Convention. It explicitly prohibits their use as incendiary weapons against people and the environment. Israel did not comment on these reports. The Israeli army on Wednesday said it struck the Islamic University of Gaza, claiming it is an important Hamas operational, political and military center. The institution, established in 1978, offers higher education in different faculties, including arts, engineering, law and medical sciences. The Palestinian Ministry of Higher Education and Research on Wednesday condemned the direct attack on the buildings and facilities of two universities, the Islamic University and the Al-Azhar University, both located in Gaza. It called on all institutions, organizations and international bodies to intervene quickly and to work hard to protect the institutions that serve all the Palestinian people from these attacks. It also called on them to work immediately to guarantee the right of students to safe education. In the South African city of Johannesburg, demonstrators gathered outside the U.S. consulate protesting America's decision to send arms to Israel in the current crisis. They waved Palestinian flags and displayed banners expressing solidarity with Palestine. Iqbal Jassat, a representative of the Media Review Network, said by supplying weapons, the U.S. is contributing to the violence against civilians in Gaza. He emphasized that such attacks on residential areas, schools and other civilian infrastructure violate international humanitarian laws. Mamat Lewe Sebe, leader of the General Industries Workers Union of South Africa, said there is a need to end the decades-long suffering of Palestinians, especially the ongoing siege of Gaza. In the city of Cape Town, another demonstration echoed these sentiments, condemning Israeli bombings in Gaza. South Africa this week called for the end of hostilities between Israel and Palestine. Israeli newspaper Yediath Ahronot, citing senior prison authorities, reports that electricity has been cut off to all Palestinian prisoners. The move by the commissioner for the prison service, Katie Perry, has also blocked media access and communications to prisoners. Perry justified the measure, saying she wants to prevent prisoners from passing on tips or possible instructions. She also recently ordered all Palestinian prisoners be locked in their cells. Meanwhile, water and electricity supplies in Gaza have been cut off, worsening residents' dire living conditions. Wafer Benham, head of the Palestinian Energy Authority, said shutdown of the only power plant in Gaza is imminent. Benham noted most of the solar panels in Gaza are so badly damaged they can no longer generate energy. Gaza's main power plant has stopped operating due to fuel shortages. Although residents use electricity generators, the Israeli siege is, calling a shortage of fuel, is causing a shortage of fuel, making their operation difficult. The Palestinian Ministry of Health warns that hospital fuel reserves will soon be depleted with potentially catastrophic consequences. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.